Just like you, your art is a big deal. But it's not always easy to stand out and sell your work. If you find all that posting, promoting and marketing a challenge, then I have some good news. In my new ebook, 10 industry experts share their top art marketing and selling tips. This guide is free and ready for you to download. Go to www.sonyasmallhair.com How are you going to turn all of your efforts, all of your marketing, your message, your mastering your art, you're in the right mindset, all good and well, but if you can't turn that into a revenue, you can't monetize it, you're going to have a short career as an artist. How can you turn your creativity into a revenue stream? Because I've seen in all the coaching that I do that the lack of money is usually the biggest reason why artists are not pursuing a career as an artist is because they have not been able to turn their art into a revenue stream. My name is Sonia Small here. I'm an artist, art coach and course creator. When I graduated from the Art Academy, I had learned how to paint and how to draw, but I had no idea how to earn a living with my creativity. I was not prepared for the life as a working artist. This often left me quite frustrated, sometimes on the verge of calling it quits, throwing away my brushes and giving it all up. But I'm so glad I didn't. After many failed attempts and valuable lessons learned, I've discovered ways to turn my creativity into a profession, now giving me the freedom to live the life I love. I created the Help I'm Artist podcast because no matter where you are on your journey, whether you're just starting out or maybe you've been a working artist for a while, you too can take steps to turn your creative passions into a meaningful, sustainable profession. The Help I'm Artist podcast is filled with fresh inspiration, practical tips and interviews with artists who are experts in their field. If you're a smart artist or one in the making who's looking for new and exciting ways to get your art out of your studio and into the hands and hearts of an audience that's appreciative and willing to pay what it's worth, then you're in the right place. Happy listening. As another year comes to an end, it's the perfect time for you as an artist and a business owner to reflect and plan for your new year. Now I'd love to tell you that the roller coaster days are behind us, but I have the sneaky feeling that we're not out of the woods yet. In a recent poll I sent to my art community revealed that 2021 was not all doom and gloom. I'm encouraged that many artists in the community are positive and despite the challenges they faced have seen growth in their art practices. These artists noted that the three main reasons they saw growth in 2021, even amidst the restrictions, was because they finally found more time for their art. The restrictions helped them focus on things that truly mattered, feeling less distracted by all the stuff happening around them. Many artists started using the online space in a bigger, bolder way, showing up and sharing with their audiences in a consistent way. This engagement resulted in lasting relationships, translating directly into more sales. Can you relate to any of these reasons? Now I'm certain that 2022 will come with a fresh dose of challenges, but these uncertain times should not define you. I hope you're feeling inspired and encouraged about what's possible for you and for your art. There are things that you can do to get yourself ready to see more growth in 2022. In this episode, I'll be sharing five parts of a working artist's life and what you can focus on to see that growth happen in 2022. But before we start with the five parts, let's just assess why it is important to prepare. A great quote I came across says, Wisdom is seeing tomorrow's consequences of today's events. Will your actions, the actions you take today, bring you closer to your art dream or move you further away. As you go into your new year, this new season, where or whenever you're listening to this podcast, take some time to get really clear about where you see yourself this time next year. Being prepared will make a huge difference and it's that plan and intent that's going to help you move forward. 
Without a plan, your dream is just a wish. It's time to put that imagination to good use and start imagining your year. Now, I shouldn't just stay with imagining, start putting it down on paper. And that's why in this episode, we're going to be looking at those five areas, those crucial foundational areas of a working artist's life. We'll be starting with mindset. How you think as an artist is how you're going to act as an artist. We'll be looking at mastery, at your message, at your marketing, and how you can monetize from all four of these important parts. But let's start with mindset. How are you thinking about your art? What thoughts pop up when you are making your art? How would you describe the relationship that you have with your art self? If you were to give it a number between 1 and 10, 10 being great and 1 being not so great. If you find that you're 6 and below, then 2022 might be a great opportunity for you to start setting up some healthy thought patterns, some healthy mindsets. And you can do this in various ways. We'll be looking at that shortly. Can you remember where you were this time last year? What project were you working on? How did you feel about your art? What were your aspirations? Did you see any of these aspirations come about? Now this year might have sprung you some surprises, but you showed up, you got to work. You're listening to this podcast because you're wanting to find ways to grow your art and build your art business. You want to turn all of that creative passion into a profession. You want to earn sustainable revenue streams with your creativity. I'm so glad you showed up. Your journey might not be smooth and easy. Your income will fluctuate. Your energy will shift and your focus will change as your projects come and go. Growing as an artist is a continual process of anticipation, pivoting and learning. And especially in these times when you really don't know from one moment to the next what's going to be happening in the world. Whether your exhibition will happen, whether you can have your open studios, whether you'll be able to connect in person or whether you'll be forced to go back solely using the online space. These ups and downs are part of an artist's life and not all your actions will be successful. It's often in those not so successful moments where the real growth happens. So as the year comes to a close, or maybe a season comes to a close, a chapter in your life comes to a close, take a moment to envision where you'd like to see yourself this time next year. Where do you see opportunities? Opportunities for growth, for collaborations, for new projects, for reaching new audiences in the new year. Start your year fresh with a new planner. At the end of this episode, head over to your online shop, your favorite stationery shop and buy a planner. Get an idea of your year. See 2022 in front of you with those four quarters, with those 12 months, with those weeks and with those days. Circle this time next year on your calendar and write down where you'd like to see yourself, what you should want to be doing, where you want to see your art business. What growth curve can you imagine that's realistic and exciting for your art business? Hang that calendar up, make it large, hang it up in your studio and get an idea of your time. Your greatest asset and win is getting a grip on your time. So you're not just going around in circles hoping you're going to hit your targets. And this all starts with your mindset, how you're thinking about your art business. You'll only be growing towards that which you can envision that what you can see. You can't see it, you can't grow towards it. Now I know it can be challenging to get into the right frame of mind, especially when you haven't had those wins, been disappointed, you haven't received the results that you were hoping, or you weren't accepted into a commission or an art prize or a residency that you were looking for. All these things can really dampen your spirits. And the best thing to get your confidence back is to go for small wins. So make realistic goals for your year. Small little wins that you can see quick results from so that you can build your confidence or get that confidence back because that'll help you not just stay in survival mode, but to get into a mindset of growth, how you're showing up, how you're going to your studio, how you're making your art, how you're posting online, what you're writing on your website and your blog, how you're communicating at in-person events, how you're talking about your art. If you're in that survival mentality like, please, someone love my art, then you're always going to be the underdog. It's time to find your confidence, nurture positive mindsets, surround yourself with positive people, people that can affirm you, 
people that can encourage you, your cheerleaders that you can confide in to talk and to share so that you're not out there all by yourself and start setting some clear goals. The clearer you have goals, start maybe with smaller goals. So not reaching the whole world, maybe just being reaching uh, people in the local market. So setting those small goals, having those small wins will make a huge difference and help you get into the right frame of mind. The second part, big part of an artist's life is mastery. Are you mastering your craft? Your biggest marketing asset is your art. Make good art and your art will start resonating with an audience. Determine to be more skilled in 2022. And there are so many amazing courses out there. I'm just so excited about all the possibilities that the online space offers. Just the excellent teachings that are out there for artists. You don't even have to leave your studio. You can just log in online and you can learn. Just yesterday I was working with another artist, friend of mine, and we were doing an online session of figure drawing. And we had the same poses and we were working and we were critiquing each other's work. And this is such a good way to learn. Maybe you're restricted and offline teaching is not possible. Find something, good tuition. You have to discern the right kind of teachers because it's not all good out there. But there is high quality education available. So learn, develop your skills. Take some time to make an inventory. What is it that you're missing in your toolkit? What are you missing as an artist? What are you struggling with? Is it always with mixing colors for example so you always are limiting yourself in your expression because you don't quite understand color theory or color mixing or is perspective totally <laughs> messing up your work or you wanted to do more uh, figure drawing but you don't quite understand anatomy or you haven't made that your skill yet it's all learnable and doable it'll take time and for you to put in that extra effort to learn these things so make a list of everything that you're struggling with so that you can find tuition. So that you make 2022 a year where you're going to master your skills. And then find a muse. Find someone that's just a little bit further down the road in your genre. Same kind of artwork that they're doing. Similar style. What are they doing? You can learn so much from other artists. It's not that you're copying or stealing. You are going to see what they've been doing. They are ahead of you. They have grown their audiences. They are reaching people. They are exhibiting maybe in a different geographical area. And they're seeing success. Can you conclude from their websites, from how they're communicating, from their social media, who they are as people, what are they saying, how are they talking about their art, and what is their art, the level of their art, who is it resonating with, and what can you learn from them? And then conquer the curve. Maybe you've heard the term the creative curve and this creative curve, it's like the letter U on the left side of that U, the, the top part is when you're starting a project and you're excited and you are just so inspired and anything and everything is possible. But as you travel down the creative curve, your creative process, this could be an hour, this could be a few minutes, this could be years, you come to a place that you're stuck stuck technically, your skill level, or you're stuck in the mindset, you're stuck with a disappointment, and you can't seem to press through to the other end of your curve. This is the place where you can be super distracted, your phone becomes very interesting, all those blings and beeps and notifications will get you out of the creative flow because you're stuck, you haven't found the way to press through to the other end. If you've been stuck in certain places, find a way to press through so you come out the other end. Conquer that curve so that at the end, maybe it's a painting you need to finish or a technique that you haven't been able to master. You haven't been able to press through and finish something. Make 2022 a year of finishing, of getting to the other end. The third part of a working artist's life is your message. There's you as the artist who makes art who has something to say. Do you have a clear point of vision or are you going around in circles, not quite sure what you want to say or are you saying what everyone else is saying? Take time in 2022 to refine your message. What is your point of vision? How are you seeing the world? What's important to you? What are your core values? What motivates you, gets you excited, gets you riled up? 
makes you furious? What makes you get out of bed in the morning? An artist's life is all about developing a relationship with your creativity, understanding those things that you're feeling deeply and being able to put that out on paper, in writing, in your clay, in your sculptures, whatever art form you're making. Develop that relationship with your creativity. And you can do that by looking at lots of art, reading art books, having talks with other artists. Join our artist community, the Help I'm Artist Facebook group, where it's a community of artists. We talk about art, we share, we have live sessions so that you can get an understanding of how you see the world, how you are going to put that into your art piece. And I found artists that have been successful or are seeing results are artists that can communicate. Communicate not only through their art, but also in words, whether they're written or spoken words. How are you writing about your art? If you're unclear of where you're going as an artist or what you want to say, it's very difficult to write a post or to write a blog or do an interview, a podcast interview or radio interview or television interview talking about your art. It'll always stay at a certain level because you haven't quite processed your creative vision, your artistic vision. So the more clear you are about your vision, your point of view, the clearer you can communicate that also in the spoken and the written form. Start to refine your message. Start to sound like you. If someone were to talk to you in person, does that also resonate in your social content or on your website? Have you found your voice? Have you found the way of talking or sharing? And maybe you need to sit down with someone who is good in writing and really find your words so that you're not sounding like everyone else or just some popular regurgitation of what's happening out there in the social and online spaces. But can you sound like you? Then become more intentional about what you're sharing. So you're not just sharing for the sake of sharing, but be intentional. Why are you sharing on social media? Why are you posting that post, using that hashtag, writing that blog, sharing that piece of content, being more intentional so that it's not just content driven like I need to because I have to. Look at it from the end perspective. Where do you want people to go? If you're wanting to promote a certain event that's happening, your new collection is coming out live or you have a new blog coming out or maybe you've refreshed your website Make it into an event and start communicating that very intentionally through your stories, through your Instagram, your feed, through reels, whatever social media platform you are using. And become more aware of who is on the receiving end of your content. Start getting a better understanding of your art audience. Start asking questions. Start listening to what people are posting, what people are saying, how they're responding to your communication, to your message. In the previous episode, we talked about connecting with your art audience, that you can listen, that you can ask, ask questions. You can do polls and surveys on your social media, in person, talking about your art with people. You can be that detective and get understanding, like who is it that actually buys art? Who is this mysterious art buyer? Who is the person that resonates with my art? What is it that they want to hear, see or experience online? And how can you serve them better? So getting really clear about your message and finding creative ways to share this with your art audience. And then find ways to elevate your art through quality images and words. This is also a part of your message. Everything that you're putting out there is speaking. It might not be saying what you wanted to say. That posting all those images on your website might just be setting up the wrong message. So take a fresh look at your content, have a fresh look at your message. Can you elevate the photography? Can you book a professional photo shoot to get those better images for your profile, for your of your art itself, lifestyle shots of your art so that you can sprinkle that in with your own photography that you can do with your mobile phone, which is absolutely fine, but find ways to elevate it to a next level so that it really resonates. You are representing yourself in the best possible way online and offline. Once you have your message clear, now you can bring it to market. You can use that those images and those words to start connecting with your art audience, your art with your art audience, your vision with an art audience. 
And this connecting and communicating is what we call marketing. Take time in this new year to understand the art market. So much has changed these last few years of how people are interacting, engaging with art. Who is buying art? Where are people buying art? Make a list of all those places in your community, in your surroundings of where people would be engaging with art. And are there opportunities for you to press into? Take an inventory of your marketing tools. Maybe you've just been posting for posting sake. Write down a list of two or three ways that you are going to market your work and stick to the plan. So maybe you've been experimenting and seeing, you know, I'm going to be using Facebook or the reels on Instagram and choose two or three channels. Can you assess where your art audience is? What makes you happy? What gives you energy? Do more of what works and less of what is not working. So make a list of all your marketing assets. So anything that communicates and connects, that's what you're doing, your vision with your art audience. All those different platforms, whether it's a blog, a newsletter, whether you are wanting to be guests in a podcast or you're wanting to do a YouTube channel, whatever it is, choose two or three and do them really well. It's time this season to go far deeper, not spreading yourself too thin, going too wide, but start going deeper, being more intentional, reaching your art audience and then work according to a launch plan. Find a concept that really works with your art and turn that into some kind of event. Maybe you want to be releasing daily paintings. Maybe you make small paintings that you can release every day. Every day at a certain time of day, you're releasing a new painting. Or set up some kind of event that happens weekly. Like Fresh Art Friday, for example. I'm just making things up. Or Moody Art Mondays. Something that people will remember like Sarah when she's posting every Monday there's going to be a new post at a certain time or on Friday at a certain time every Friday if you can commit to that then it becomes an event an event that people can relate to this really can help you see growth because people will be looking forward to it and it will give you that structure in your communication in your posting you can make that into an event according to a launch plan And you can do that once a month. You know, if you have larger pieces that take more time, then you can have the certain day of a month. So if the 10th of the 10th, for example. So on the 10th of every month at 10 a.m., you're releasing a new artwork. This will not only help you, but it will also help your audience. They really can look forward to that certain event that's happening. So can you set up some kind of marketing event, some kind of concept around your art? And that you can commit to and that you can stick to and that you can set up your marketing plan according to that structure. So we've looked at mindset, mastering, your message, your marketing. So our final M is monetizing. How are you going to turn all of your efforts, all of your marketing, your message, your mastering your art, you're in the right mindset, all good and well. But if you can't turn that into a revenue, you can't monetize it. You're going to have a short career as an artist. How can you turn your creativity into a revenue stream? It starts too with having a healthy mindset about money. If money sent you to the hills, has you breaking out into a rash, you don't want to talk about it, you're doing art for art's sake, you'll love the process, but you know, money, that's a difficult conversation. Then I want to challenge you this new year to find a healthy way, a healthy mindset about earning money and that you have value to bring you bring goodness into this world you have taken time and energy and money to make your art and that this is of value and that you are allowed to ask something for it and you're not doing someone a favor who's buying your art no you are offering them value and value exchange that's what money is start by getting a clear overview of your expenses and your earnings Take a big, solid, bold, vulnerable look at your income. What was your year like? What paintings really sold? What paintings didn't sell? Maybe you really were struggling to sell your art. What were your expenses? And what were your returns? And can you find ways to cut expenses, to live a more streamlined life? Can you downsize in certain areas so that you can grow again and become healthy? 
because I've seen in all the coaching that I do that the lack of money is usually the biggest reason why artists are not pursuing a career as an artist is because they have not been able to turn their art into a revenue stream, monetizing. Have a good look of what has worked and what has not worked. Get really clear, get really honest. Maybe you need to sit down with an accountant or someone in your network that is good with figures and with money. Get really honest and raw about it and then start with a clean line and see where you can streamline your business and your life. And look at ways that you can create more revenue. Maybe it's making smaller pieces at another price point. At the end, you can reach your revenue goals because you can produce more and you can reach more people. Or maybe you need to change your technique a little bit so it's not so laborsome or the materials aren't that expensive. Or find a different way of shipping. Maybe a lot of your revenue is going to the shipping. You are covering the cost of the shipping because you don't want to burden your art audience with it. Can you make other ways, interesting creative ways of shipping your work so it's not so heavy, rolling it up into a tube, for example. Start setting clear revenue goals for the new year. What is it that you want to see happen as far as your revenue stream by the end of this new year? How much is it that you actually want to earn? And how does that translate into art? How much art do you need to make to reach that revenue goal? And is it realistic? Do you need to find ways to diversify so that you can create that revenue stream so it will sustain you? Or maybe you are in a process of transition, going from a full-time job to a part-time job so that you can have more time for your artistry. Take this new year to get healthy in your finances. There's nothing worse than lying awake at night worrying about how am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to be able to pay for my next project? How am I going to get my art materials? This will drain all your energy and you want to be in a place of strength, in a place of health, because when you're in a place of health, it'll show and you can make your art with far more joy and satisfaction. And in closing, take your 12 months. So from January 2022 to the end of the year and allocate a theme for each month. What is your focus for the month of January? Maybe it's your website. Maybe it's to get organized. Maybe it's to downsize. What's the theme for April? What's the theme for September? Write down a word or two what you're going to be focusing on on those months. In the media section of the Help I'm Artist Facebook community, you can head over there to download a free PDF that you can print out and then with every month you can write your theme. You can hang it in your studio and that you can see like, okay, now my focus for the month of February is this or March is this or, or uh, September is this. It'll just give you that little bit of a beacon on the horizon that you can grow and work towards. So five areas of a working artist's life, mindset, getting into the right frame of mind, mastering what areas do you need to work on, find ways to develop your skills and be a better artist at the end of the year. Can you refine your message, what you're putting out there with words, with images, written and spoken words, getting really clear about your artistic vision, your marketing, how you're connecting those words, those images, your art with an art audience, and then monetizing, getting into a place of health with your finances and finding new and exciting ways to build a revenue stream around your creativity. Well, that's all for this week. If you want extra support in marketing and building a business around your creativity, then you're welcome to join me and a group of wonderful artists from around the world in the Help I'm Artist Facebook group. Here you'll find a video version of this podcast and other episodes. Don't forget to download your free art marketing guide you can head over to www.sonyasmallhere.com. And if you don't ever want to miss an episode, then you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to this episode and leave a review as this will make the podcast more visible and easier for other artists to find it. Thanks for that. Have an amazing week and I look forward to connecting with you next time. Until then.